Welcome back to part two. In part one, I set up my orchard and do a little fertilization. For part two, a little more exciting because we got to do uh, some ceiling transplant. So here my uh, tomato and uh, pepper also some in the back of the eggplants. All right, now let's just start the transplant. So this side, a few of my tomato gonna go here because this is perfect uh, trailers. I grow tomato all the time on this side, like since I started gardening a few years ago. And I gonna do uh, the big steak, the, the big fruit uh, variety on this side. And maybe behind the camera there, uh, a small front yard there. It doesn't get as much sun, the same here. But uh, for the cherry type, I gonna use uh, like a tomato cake. All right, after a little struggling to find where to put what, finally I set it down with this setup. So spacing between tomato about uh, two feet and it will be grow in a single stem and I will stake them to the wall there, to the rail. And between the tomato plants, I put uh, pepper plants. So in between, right, it's not directly in the middle but it's more on the side so it still have a plenty of space to grow so now let's plant in this one king of the north for pepper plant or plant in general try not to bury them too deep because it may uh, choke and die the plant but uh, only a tomato that the go-to one that you should make it deeper so this is should be uh, deep enough for our plant. Now you eat a little fertilizer and spring back the soil, the dirt. And now they are in the signature finishing touch, water them. This one is the uh, Alaska Free Fertilizer. They all set now. I would uh, recommend mulching it. Uh, but for now, for today, I don't have yet. So I will mulching later in the season. But if you have the mulch, you should uh, mulch around the plants. Not right onto the stem, but around the base. Now move on to the tomato plant. So tomato is a uh, different slightly different you already know uh, it enjoy to be uh, we dig the hole like much deeper than any other plant because the more uh, deeper you go the more the root it will grow along the stem that we bury them a handful of the fertilizer mm -hmm. Maybe another handful. Now for a transplant, it all done and set. That I would say, only missing is the, some kind of mulch, but not for today. For today, it's done. So this one, a uh, tomato, uh, a little different setup because it's a sun gold. It's a cherry type, so I would grow into a bush and let it wind and climb up the whole bush in this uh, tomato cage. But the rest on along the wall here, you can see a, a piece of a bamboo stage tied up to the wall, to the rail, because I would grow them in a single stem. So cherry types go into the bush, beef steak or slicer, go into a single stem. All right, folks. So the first few minutes in this video, I filming it about two months ago uh, because uh, life have happened and I get really busy. Uh, just only now I have some free time. So all the transplant and starting seedling is long gone already. So to finish up, this video, the last part of this video, let me just uh, give you a quick tour about the transplant that I did about two months ago. So let's start from the front. 
On the left hand side, there are the tomato transplant that I did about two months ago. Uh, we're gonna go through all, a little bit over later on, but I just want to do a quick update on my berry here. This one, uh, I believe it's red currant. This is the first time it bear fruit. One bunch here and another bunch there. Only two bunch I got this season and it's the first time it fruit. I think I have two or three years already this one. Only this year it start to grow nicely into a big bush. Next to it is the, my thorn left prime out blueberry or blackberry. The older branch they are a bit of the green fruits. And this is just a, a new shoot. This one late summer or about fall it would have a ripe fruit. For now it's only start to grow. And this is my uh, golden raspberry. It's, it's good. It grow nicely also. It put out a lot of a uh, runner down in the base there. I thinning quite a bit already, but it still have a lot of them. So this one are uh, very uh, tasty. Mm, it arrived very fast. Maybe in a few weeks, or maybe in a month, it will be ripe. And now on the left, the tomato along the wall here. They do in surprisingly good. This season, thing it's very cold. So at first I thought I put out them too early, it get kind of stunned, but to my surprise, maybe it get some heat from the wall, it doing slightly better than the one in the front house there. And this year I tried to squeeze in the paper along the road there and some green. It already bolting this one a uh, tart soy I believe. Look at this. Maybe it's good for harvest already. Uh, I translate it late also. Really try to find time to put them in after the the seedling ready to go, but I have no chance. So on along this wall they are one i believe one or two three each from the a few variety that i have left over this season this season i don't get any new variety for my tomato and this one i believe is sun goes it's a cherry tomato i let it go into a bush form because it's a cherry tomato so it can bush out but the rest here i try to limit to one or two stem only because they are beef steak type we need to do single trunk so it can produce good size fruit. And here there are some salads. Believe it or not, this is the first time that I have a success with salad, uh, leafy green. Previous year, I just do direct seed and when it becomes seedlings, tender leaf, the house sparrow would disseminate them. But this time I cover when it's small, and now I transplant it. It's it's okay. It able. Uh, it's good enough for it now if we really want it. And in case if you wonder what do I put there, they are a mushroom substrate that they already harvested, but I <coughs> use it as a mulch, and sometimes it can still grow more mushroom. I have it like a few basket uh, early over after I spread it, but now it uh, I don't think it has any more mushroom inside those two, uh, few. Um, this side, uh, this row they are cucumber. Only put them in less than a month ago, and it's still cool down. So this kind of uh, plant they love heat and this season not really much yet and this trailer first time doing this one i hope they gonna do it just fine okay. 
So down there, arugula and interplant with onions. I hope to harvest soon of the arugula because it would uh, overcrowd the tomato with the onion. It's also a uh, bold thing. Same thing, the, the whole seedling, the salad here, the leafy, leafy green, arugula, uh, and uh, the other type of the green there, the tart soy. They all uh, way, way stay too long in the uh, seedling tray. Uh, go further a little bit. Here, a few of my fig trees that I really don't have any more space to put them on the roof so I just uh, put here they don't get much of the sun this one one preva there the variety that I get from the root cutting experiment there and same thing with the bit only bit seem to be doing better than anything else but who know uh, how cheap how big are the root of wood produced so Decided pretty much it. Uh, here's some uh, ginger, and this is my uh, honey crisp apple. Grow nice leaf. Try to do as well it. Uh, not really uh, do it trailer, just try to stake it. We'll see how it go. Uh, here's some of the fruit tree. Oh. Uh, my peach. Mm. It produced uh, quite a bit, but I left two and it already fall off, already dropped. So it's still too young to hold the fruit because uh, this is the first season that I plant them. I have it planted in a different place, but uh, it has nobody taking care of them. It stays the same size. But now put them in the pot seem to be doing better. And this is what the fruit that it dropped. So, no, nothing to taste this season. Uh, for more granite, this one start to leaving out now. And by the way, this is the, my in-ground uh, violet day bottle. If you do a few braver. So this is just for the experiment how, how hard it is. But this season, some uh, winter quite warm, not too cold. It get a late freeze, but the winter itself it warm and in the neighborhood there are plenty of breva. Almost every house that has fig trees it load with breva, and I get a few of them. So this is in case uh, anybody wondering, one this one have like finger leaf and this one have like a spade leaf. It just normal for the wild day bodo nothing uh, special nothing uh, uh, written in stone it uh, just some tree it behave like this and um, one fun fact uh, fig tree it produces huge leaf when it doesn't get much sun that's how nature compensate when they don't get much sun they produce huge leaf so they can soak up more of the sun when they have it this is my uh, mulberry second season already i got it a uh, free of cutting when i ordered the cutting uh, back uh, two years ago and uh, i don't know what variety and it's unlikely to produce any fruit this season maybe i would uh, put in a larger pot and put in a sunny spot because mul mulberries it seem to be a good fruit also and that's that's all for this side yard Everything looking good, it start to grow now because today almost at the end of the May and when the June come, it just like supercharged the gardens. So, alright folks, thank you for watching and I believe I still have another video for the, to complete this uh, series. So, see you in the next video. Bye bye.